Oh, it's Ubisoft. Their Prince of Persia titles are getting the Metroid treatment until recently when Nintendo decided to get their act together. Why is the opening scene before the main menu the opening scene after the main menu? Game literally starts you off by walking into a room. Yeah, I'll definitely remember that at the end of the game. Also, proper etiquette dictates you should not waltz into a lady's room in the middle of the night, whether you're a prince or a pauper. Most people think time is like a river. Prince with Persian background speaks with a British accent for extra pizzazz. Also, this entire game is all about narration. From beginning to end. That deserves 50 sins on its own. Speaking of narration, who is he narrating to? Is this a fourth wall break? I mean, in the two thrones, he recounts the entire story to Pharaoh, but that was in that game. Did the developers plan that far ahead? I don't know whether to give it a sin or remove one. Let's just stick with the standard. Sit down, and I will tell you a tale like none that you have ever heard. Dude, all you've seen is a large hourglass filled with sand, monotonous battles with sand creatures, and the most eccentric honeymoon with a princess. No, you want to tell the story in an exciting way, but facts are facts, and the fact is, you are exaggerating. The only thing exciting here was your redo button. I get the feeling the prince will be making non-stop anagalous metaphors as he parkours from the entrance of the palace to the tower of the vizier. I am the son of Sharam. A mighty king of Persia. This qualifies as a roll credits moment. On our way to Azad with a small company of men, we passed through India. <coughs> where the promise of honor and glory tempted my father into a grievous error. Your father decided to invade a Maharaja's kingdom with only a small company of warriors based on a promise? Sounds like your father was a terrible king. This is an autobiography that could likely destroy your reputation. Also, this is apparently a small company of warriors. See. Prince of Persia suffers from Devil May Cry Syndrome, where acoustic ambiance takes shotgun instead of dialogue. Also, the vizier figures out the secret to immortality, because approximately two millennia later, he decides to let himself go and see Ford the Big Shell on the coast of the New York Harbor. See, I like a warrior son. I know every father wants to be proud of their son, but you might need to elevate the requirements. I mean, the kid hasn't done anything yet except get thrown off his horse. From that moment, I thought of one thing only. The honor and glory I would bring my father by fighting like a warrior in my first battle. Or the sadness and regret you bring him when you get filleted. I would win my father's praise, not by killing him, but by being the first to find the Maharaja's treasure vault and the wonders within. Before possibly fighting through hordes and hordes of warriors and defend the vault against some more using my Ochia prowess. Why are you looking for the vault? This water has healing properties, that's way more valuable. There are many halls, corridors, and trap ridden rooms in this palace. How does anyone get around? Does the Maharaja have an elitist parkour squad? Are there easy ways from one place to another? Why are there traps in certain places and not in others? I'm starting to believe the Maharaja was a long lost forgotten ancestor of Kevin McAllister. And there it lay, just out of reach. The Dagger of Time. There was a treasure I could carry with pride as a trophy of our victory. Making the vault only a way to mislead you, because I need to spice up my boring story since 90% of it was show, not tell. Okay, so the Dagger of Time is out of reach, so obviously he can't reach it from this side of the wall. But why is there a hole in the wall in the first place? Was it specifically built this way? Do the people worship the dagger? Who was it meant for? Why is nobody using it? Is it a memento of some kind? This hole in the wall is one of many holes in your story, my man. Stupid sudden ceiling fixture fault to show off dagger abilities is stupid. Also, he just reversed time. If the dagger affects him the way it affects everything, why does he remember anything after activating the dagger's powers? You should either put him in an infinite loop so that the almost dying scenario keeps playing over and over again or until the dagger runs out of juice. Is it ineffective on memories? Should have been called the dagger of physics. I want no animals or maidens harmed until I have chosen. Let it be known, King Sharaman is merciful in victory. What? How is that merciful? Women are one thing since individuals could have been assassins, but animals? Animals are just following the orders of their human counterparts. Let it be known King Sharaman was a prick. Pharaoh's per Farah al vision must have been on vacation. See what I did there? I'll show myself out. Ubisoft didn't want to set an exact error to this game in event someone would either verify the ignorance in their presentation or to hide the fact they had no knowledge of the era. I cannot find a single article of factual evidence where Babylonia invaded India before Common Era, or a reference to when this game may play its fictional part in history. Good job. Trust not a man who has betrayed his master, nor take him into your own service, lest he betray you too. Maybe it's possible King Sharaman was a benign individual, but similar to Common Era, they had advisors. They weren't some backland hobos acting on impulses. Sure, honor meant a lot to them, so they took massive steps to protect that. It's not much of an exaggeration to assume some advisors told the king, Hey, this vizier betrayed the previous Maharaja, it's possible he'll betray you too. I mean, at the very least, someone should have been keeping an eye on him. 
The forthcoming situations would have definitely been avoided, but Ubisoft knows as much about Babylonia as they know about learning from their mistakes. I give you the sands of time. How does Sharaman know what the sands are called? They could be called anything, like the sands of fortune, sands of gold, the sands of your mama, literally anything. Maybe the vizier told him, but then it should have aroused suspicion as to why he even knows that. You know, it is possible to be both merciful and astute. Okay, I really didn't want to compare this game to Aladdin, but seriously. A prince, a vizier, a powerful treasure that the vizier wants to gain phenomenal power. Even his walking stick in comparison is almost identical to Jafar's snake staff. Ubisoft, what the actual deuce? Pharaoh waited until the last possible moment to try to stop the prince from unlocking the hourglass. He might be saying, hey, she's a slave now. No one will care what she has to say. True, but feminine wilds, they are a thing. Use them. Did they seriously try to attack Sand? Might be a really good time, you know, to reverse time. Farrah and Nobles went to the Tron School of Right Angle Turns. You think my story is impossible? Perhaps I am mad. Who would not be driven mad by horrors such as I have lived? But I assure you, every word is true. And I left out the most fascinating parts, like why I had visions of the future, why water heals me, and why I have the heaviest British accent carried through my amateur storytelling skills. Were there others like me, who yet clung to life, hiding in fear among the ruins? It did not seem so. What we play and what the prince seems to say are completely different stories. I mean, he just saw Farrah running through this corridor. Contradictory piece of writing is contradictory. Had I really seen her? Or had my senses given way under the burden of horrors too great to bear and conjured up a phantom? Either way, I could not rest until I had found her again. It seems loneliness is the prince's greatest enemy. I mean, if he had shown any interest in her before, it would have been during her capture. Geez, game, you could at least try to sequence. I have a feeling I'm not in Azad anymore. Prince of Oz. Also, where the hell is he? Secrets are one thing, but you can't just teleport him to some ethereal plane and expect a player to roll with it. Also, also, Prince drinks some pooled water situated at some random place, possibly contacting cholera, typhoid, and dysentery. At least have the smarts to boil it first, dude. Give me the dagger. In order to obtain another person's possessions, all you need to do is ambush them, then firmly demand said item. From now on, I trust no one but myself. Go back to the reception hall. Wait for me there. Look, buddy, everything you narrate and everything you do contradict constantly. You will henceforth be known as the Prince of Exaggeration. Now I remembered her. Since we left India, she had been there. In the desert, I had felt her dark eyes upon me. Now, here she was again. She and I, the only two survivors. Did I say two? Excuse me. We were three. Let's just add 20 sins for his word of mouth errors, since I don't want to make this whole video all about dreary, over the top narration. Oh, thank God! I was afraid you were one of them! The British conquest of India happened in the 1600s, and this game takes place sometime before Common Era, so why does this guard have a British accent? Here, internet, I have provided you with a game that is truly inaccurate, so rip on this game instead of King and Come Deliverance. Also, if only three people had survived the transformative elements of the Sands of Time, who is this Billy Joe Jim Bob? Seems that the prince can't count either. Certain artifacts such as a dagger, the medallion, and the staff protect the ones who wield them, but I guess this guard survived because the writers forgot about him. Where is she getting all those arrows from? Pharaoh runs out of arrows as much as a prince runs out of sword. I'm sorry. Why? I know what it is to lose a father. During this timeline, your father was killed by his, so your sympathy here makes no sense. If anything, she should be furious with him, but the power of testosterone proves otherwise. Help me find the hourglass. It is in the Sultan's treasure vault, atop the Tower of Dawn. How do you know that? I just know. She buys this. Wait, now the game is confusing me. In this vision, he falls to his death. Did he change his fate? Why isn't this surprising to him? In fact, he doesn't even say anything regarding it. I suppose after all the crazy stunts that he does, visualizing his death is just a picnic. This game suffers from Capcom Syndrome, where repetition is less of a tactical design choice and more of a let's force feed you the same BS up until the last five minutes. <laughs> Swords designed to break walls. So when the prince enters the sands and has visions, he also glimpses combat strategies future him is using. Does he learn them in the present time from the visions? Or did he already know them but use them in particular situations? How would it affect the future? Is it one of many possibilities like multiverse theory? Answers, developers. We need them. Stop boring us with your lousy snail-paced combat mechanics and pedestrian dialogue. I'm going to add a sin for nothing. You heard me. This game is about six hours long if you know what you're doing. I've gone through one hour and nothing interesting, no flaws, not even humor has been present. 
I'm suffering from sensory deprivation right about now. Wow, his sleeve ripped. And for no reason, I might add. You might wonder why I sound excited by this. To be honest, at this point, I'll take anything deviating from the norm. Look, I love parkour as much as the next guy, but when you start collapsing parts of the architecture just to extend the game's duration, then you've hit rock bottom. Pun intended. I'll meet you at the bars. She orders me around as if I were a servant. It's my own fault. With women, you need to show them you're in charge right from the start, or they'll walk all over you. I've been too indulgent. Probably because I felt sorry. Prince of Persia foresees the Me Too movement centuries later. Oh, have you been waiting here all this time? I didn't realize you I was to the other bounds. We were across the other side of the city. A lovely wash, rub with fragrant water. Too bad you weren't there. Stop talking to yourself. Maslow's hierarchy of needs dictates that the social aspect is the center of the pyramid, but Prince requires it to be his base, as going insane seems to be his most organic conundrums at the moment. Also, even though the Prince self-actualized that his sanity is failing him, he will question it once again in the two thrones. I love. Please don't leave me. I... she... what? Also, Farah has seen the Prince walk into the sands time and time again and emerge without issue, so why does she think this time will be any different? Ubisoft, you're not good at romance, so do us all a favor and stop trying. She said my love. I know she did. I didn't dream it. At least, I think I didn't. It's quite natural, really. Her kingdom's conquered. She has nothing, no one to protect her. She needs me. I can see it in the way she looks at me. All I'd have to do is reach out and take her hand, and she'd be mine. Why am I talking to myself? Ladies, I'm telling you right now, guys don't think this way. This particular example is an embarrassment to the XY gene pool. Listen to this. A fool uses reason against the power of love. Love is life. So if you want to live, die in love. Die in love if you want to stay alive. What's that supposed to mean? I thought you'd like it. If you want to be useful, try finding a book that'll tell us how to get out of here. Game? She thinks this is a game. Prince of Persia would be excellent at sinning Prince of Persia. After all, she is a Maharaja's daughter. A conquered one, but still. Blood is royal. Besides, what better way to tame her insolence? It's not so bad for a woman to have a little spirit. It's a challenge! She is narrating this entire story to Farah, right? Prince survives this, and I might add without any injuries. What is up with the soundtrack? Is he in a cage match at WrestleMania? How long have I been gone? Gone? What are you talking about? Never mind. Wait, he's just hallucinating when his max health increases? The deuce? So because of the vision where he sees Pharaoh steal the Dagger of Time, he questions her loyalties last minute. Inadvertently, he ends up playing straight into the hands of the Sands. In other words, the Sands of Trolling. Ah. <sighs> you think you're cleverer than everybody, but you're just like the rest of them. Those soldiers, all they can do is fight, destroy. Why did I trust you? Why didn't you trust me? This was much needed interaction between our two main heroes. Unfortunately, this was set up in the following way. We have an hour of introductions, and three hours of squat, and the last two hours of tying up loose ends. Fun fact, you can't have a story with only an introduction and a conclusion. A minute and a half of a screensaver. Also, just because two characters are supposed to become romantically involved doesn't make it good writing. Sure, there are tidbits here and there, but this subplot required a lot of fleshing out. Narration will only get you so far. Where are you? I'm right here. Hold my hand. You did that. Didn't you? Farah? How did you lose her? You were holding her hand! So now she uses her charms. This part of the game makes no sense. The lights go out, then we're forced to navigate a maze, ending with a cutscene where the two hook up. Like, what exactly happened here? Was he hallucinating? Did he fall asleep? 
Half the time I can't tell whether he's in the palace or in the hollow omission of his own mind. This game should be renamed to A Series of Unfortunate Events. Prince exits the repository and winds up right at the exhibit for a conveniently placed weapon which is protected by ancient Indian force fields. We really enjoyed this soundtrack, but the problem is that the majority of the others were shamefully mediocre. Did he just redo button the entire game? All the events that transpired didn't really happen at all? Meaning there are no sins? That's the greatest sin of all! Also, we know the hourglass reversed time all the way before the war began, so why does he still possess the dagger? Does the hourglass work in conjunction with the dagger? Or is the dagger the conduit through which all versions transpire? This is more like the dagger of expedience. This belongs to you. The dagger of time. But it is locked away within my father's treasure vault. How Most people think time is like a river that flows swift and sure in one direction. But I have seen the face of time, and I can tell you, they are wrong. And now we know who he was narrating to. Fine, I'll take the previous sin back, but that also means we hear this exact narration three times. Twice in this game and once in the Two Thrones. That is easily sin-worthy. Prevent him, and my father's army will know the traitor has been unmasked. They will turn back. A wild tale indeed. I have a simpler version. A Persian soldier lusting for glory entered the chambers of the Maharaja's daughter and was slain by me. Until I realized that my age, my medical condition, and my inability to transpose the timeline puts me in the loser's bracket in this duel to the death. Completely underwhelming and uninteresting final boss. Even something ridiculous would have been preferred. <coughs> A bloody cough attack. Do you have any last words you wish me to communicate to the princess before I kill her? Words of love, perhaps? <laughs> such a fantastic story. Do you think me a child that I would believe such nonsense? I said I owe you thanks. You presume too much. Such a fantastic story. <laughs> okay, I'll take a sin off for that. Wait, I don't even know your name. Just call me Kakalukia. Also, Kakalukium is a tale of Panchatantra, literally meaning of crows and owls. The moral of that story is don't trust a person who was once disloyal to your enemies, lest he betray you too. That is definitely a nice touch, so I'll subtract the sin, but I have to give the sin right back since that means the only creative writing in this game was in its ending. 